After watching this video, you should have a very fundamental understanding of how you make decisions on choosing half reactions to couple to build a basic voltaic cell. This is the basic thinking behind constructing an energy producing device like a battery. Imagine I wanted to construct a voltaic cell uh, with two of the four half reactions shown in this table here that had the maximum cell potential that I could get with these four half reactions. Um, what I want to do is show you how you would uh, make that decision and then what I want to do is show you how you can relate that cell voltage to the actual favoredness, thermodynamic favoredness, measured by the delta G change. Okay, first let's look down here at the table. You can see I've got these cell voltages here, these reduction potentials. These are all referenced to hydrogen here. And so how I can interpret these values is that the values that are positive, for example, copper, which is a positive 0.34, and silver, which is a positive 0.8, all are favored to oxidize hydrogen. In other words, copper 2 plus is a oxidizing agent with respect to H2 because the reduction potential is greater than zero, and zero is the reference point for the standard hydrogen electrode. Put simply, and I'm going to kind of write this equation out, if I were to combine copper and hydrogen, the favored thermodynamic favored uh, way to write that reaction would be copper as a reduction and H2 being oxidized. So I would flip this reaction here and I would say, well, copper 2 plus plus H2 forms copper solid plus H plus ions. That would be thermodynamically favored, would have an overall E cell that would equal 0.34 volts. That's the measured reduction potential of copper versus hydrogen. And I know that if I calculate the delta G value for this to express the thermodynamic favoredness, it would be equal to minus NFE. And because this E naught here is that value, which is positive, and the constant is positive and the number of electrons in this case would be two is also a positive number. We have this negative here. This will always be negative, meaning it's favored. So therefore, copper combined with hydrogen, the copper would be the, where the reduction was occurring. So copper in that case would be the uh, cathode and hydrogen would be the anode in combining those two half reactions. Now, let's say we wanted to take two half reactions to combined to make the largest or the maximum cell potential. In that case, we want to pick the two half reactions that have reduction potentials that are numerically the furthest apart. In that case, we would pick silver and zinc, since those two numbers are numerically farthest apart. Because silver has a more positive reduction potential, it's going to stay a reduction. And in the favored direction, zinc would be oxidized. Now, the number of electrons transferred here has to be equal, so we're going to multiply through the coefficients of the half reaction of silver by 2, but we are not going to change this number when we do that. That number remains the same regardless of the coefficients here. That's the measured thermodynamic favoredness of the reduction of silver with reference to hydrogen, and in this case doesn't matter on the number of electrons transferred. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine those two reactions. This will stay a reduction. That's going to flip to be an oxidation. The electrons will cancel. And I'll get 2Ag plus plus zinc goes to zinc 2 plus plus 2Ag. We can see that silver is being reduced and zinc is being oxidized. Now let's take those uh, substances and put them into our hypothetical voltaic cell here to illustrate the direction of electrons flow. Since silver is the reduction, I'll just put the reduction over here on the left. That's going to be where the cathode is, formally indicated by a positive sign. And so we know that this electrode would be made of silver and that electrons are flowing towards it it's, since it's the reduction, which means that electrons are going to be flowing away from the anode where oxidation occurs and we know that this would be made of zinc. 
We, of course, have silver plus ions in solution here and zinc two plus ions here. And we can't forget that to make this device work, we have a salt bridge, which I'm not going to focus on in this video, to maintain charge neutrality in the solutions. And the electrons would flow spontaneously from the zinc electrode to the silver electrode, reducing silver and oxidizing zinc. The overall cell voltage for this, measured here on the, on the voltmeter, would therefore be 0 0.80 plus this number here now reversed in sign because I flipped the reaction, plus 0.76. So I would get a total of 1.56 volts for my measured cell potential. That's the simple explanation of taking half reactions to construct a device like a basic battery.